I'm quite sure that I started this in April. Oh. <laughs> okay, maybe if I do it here. Cool. So here is my sketchbook. First thing you'll notice is that it's broken. It's split down the middle because I was very rough with it. I tried to glue it back together, but that didn't work. So this is what we have now. <laughs> the paintings or sketches are not in chronological order. So this was one of the first things I did, but this is definitely older. And what I noticed when I was going through the sketchbook is that the beginning, even this was like a later sketch. The beginning is quite, like tentative, it was me doing, I don't know if that's the right word, but it was me doing like sketchbook challenges and not really sketching or painting what I wanted as yet. And, and this is kind of where that started, um, where I was doing some challenge and I followed it through and I followed through with it. And what I later did is the ones that I really didn't like or that didn't really give me anything, I painted over them. This was a place where I painted uh, proteas and you'll see this kind of artwork often in my work and here in the sketchbook I think as well where I have an acrylic background. It's often quite colorful, it's not as muted as this and I paint over it with white paint, gesso, watercolor pencils. When I went through this, I noticed like, this is not something I would do ever again. It's a quotation kind of and embossed, things for embossing. And while I might not do that again, I also used this sketchbook as a swatch book and as a test book and that's kind of what this is. I also noticed I really like geometric and like simple patterns like this. This is a really good pancake recipe. You can adjust the milk to 1.5 or 2 cups. Just by the way, it's my mom's recipe. And every time I ask her for it, she says, you're supposed to remember by now. So I put it down in a book. <laughs> Once again, these are the early days. When I say early days, kind of last year, April. This is one of my favorites. And I think again, it's just the simplicity of it and kind of the story that might be behind it. This is more recent work and you can see that I'm maybe looser. I'm not interested so much in pretty faces anymore. This is still sketchbook challenge stuff. This is whatever that is. I sewed through this page um, because I thought I'd test out a little sewing machine that I got. And again, this is not 100% my style, but I, I do like this kind of graphic and bold look. And that's what I noticed when I went through the sketchbook and I took some notes. And I also really like the pages that have something kind of abstract on it. Some sketches I left because I think that it will be, I didn't paint over them because a lot of sketches I painted over, um, but I left them because I thought they could be inspiration for the future, like this little guy, this, this idea, and that. These are birds and flowers crossed together. And you would have seen some of this work if you're on my Instagram, if you follow me on Insta, like this one. I don't really like using words in my art. I like the words to be in the background and I'm trying to assess why. And I think one reason is my handwriting is quite neat. And the other one is sometimes it feels a little bit too on the nose, but sometimes I really feel like I do need to have writing. Like I like this one, the other one, not so much. Uh, I'm not going to really explain 
still sketchbook challenge stuff sketchbook challenge i'm not going to explain really what the paintings mean because this is not really the point of this video but i will note the kind of changes and things that interest me so this particular pattern is something i got from an artist called eric abel and he has these really nice geometric shapes and I painted that first and then this came out months later and I didn't even realize until I went through this book that it was probably inspired by this. I mean, it is different, but it's the same. And that's what I liked about going through the sketchbook. This was probably one of my first paintings in here that was just undirected and that I just put out on here. My new sketchbooks, I definitely want to do more of this, where I make notes and write things about my favorite artists or things that I need to do. Um, this was an exercise given to me by my art coach. And this guy, you'll know, I'll put a picture of what it was supposed to look like. It ended up looking like Michael Jackson. Swatches. I like doing swatches like this. I think it looks better. But one of my favorite colors for the year. I don't remember when I did this. I think maybe it's better to put writing um, in my next sketchbook, maybe a little dating system. This is a sketch I did of my canvas guy, Skoroba. I will put a picture somewhere. This was when he was in his initial phases. And here you can see notes. This is something, a page that I'm just not gonna do. And I do want this idea of a butt um, present to me because I wanna work on this in my new sketchbook. But you'll see that I just paint over it and then I paint something over that or I use something from the bottom to inspire me. Love him, love this color combination. A lot of my paintings last year were dealing with terms of like childness, childlessness or infertility. <laughs> Take two. A lot of my paintings last year were dealing with uh, childlessness or infertility or things that go around that. Mm. So this painting, um, this side here, it's a limerick and it's just really rude. Uh, this is a sketch of my partner. I do a lot of unflattering sketches of him and flattering. What was interesting about this one is I love this idea and I definitely want to expand on these ideas. I mean, this was done in July, but after I had done them, I found this sketch on Pinterest, which is the same idea. And obviously mine looks a bit different to what I saw, but I just really liked it. And I like this concept that um, I did this and I didn't really think it was such a good idea, even though it was like cool to me. And then I saw somebody else do it and I felt like, oh, okay, maybe it's okay. This is just a sketch of an elevator door, but whenever I see this, I feel a lot. It reminds me, or it is about the day my, my dog got stuck in the elevator. In case of emergency, break ass. This is a painting of my partner um, and he did not pose for this this is from my imagination and he said I could show it but I have to blur out his butt and his winky so done face break these are two self portraits I have a lot of self portraits and what I realized is very they look like me in either the hair is the same length as it was, or the body shape is like mine, or the skin color is like mine, or the idea of covering the head. I guess all characters then could be me. Um, but this aside, I, I don't want to go into this too much, but with this particular painting, I really like it. And I see that somehow. <laughs> I wonder, if I scratch this and it, and it breaks off on camera, it would be funny. Anyway. This is a perfect representation of me when I was a kid. This was my face. And I feel such a kinship to this particular painting. Don't like, but learnt a lot. What I, what you'll see in the sketchbook is I've used like these kind of outlines a lot. 
I don't think it came from here. I, I can't remember where it came from, but it's nice to notice that pattern. This hiding people concept again, and this hustle culture goose, I guess. Similar hands, so this drawing was inspired by this. And I like that. This is a recent drawing and until I did it, it just like came from my head. Obviously, I didn't see anybody with apartments coming out of their ass, but it actually represents my horrible long search for apartments. Keep I keep on scrolling the app and all the apartments look like ass. So that's what this means. Unfinished work, a lot. Finished and unfinished. This was important to me because it showed me the evolution of an idea. These are some religious based work and I'm not gonna say too much about it. I don't want to offend anybody and I hope you aren't offended. But this was something that was really uh, close to my heart and affected me. So yeah, I should have pasted paper on the things that I didn't want you to see. I'm sorry for not being organized. <laughs> A lot of butts in my work, butts and boobs and I think there's just one wiener. In love with this, in love with the idea. This whole rolling idea and technique came from um, an art exhibition we visited and a particular artist, but Beksinski, Beksinski kept on using this in his art, uh, obviously in a very different way, but I love it. So I, I really like this spread. This is a Tamil zombie and he's asking, where are you going? <laughs> um, things that I've kept because they expanded my idea of pastels and how an idea um, evolves and also showing that anything I do in my sketchbook or any research I do always shows up. In here, these are rock arts, uh, these are rock glyphs, which I did a study on. <sighs> Enjoy. I enjoy the looseness of this. So we're getting now more to when I started using moving mechanisms and I think I've kind of kept them towards the end of this book. And I really love uh, using mixed, using mechanisms in my art. This is an absolutely ugly spread. I know it's ugly, but it's infused with meaning, I promise. <laughs> this is another kind of moving mechanism. You can see um, my sketchbook's falling apart, so it tears at the paint. That's okay. Stabilo all. That's the material I used. I love that pencil. I wish I got it sooner. It's my best friend now. Some work I am busy or doing. I did this spread to show people how they could use a pigeon in a journal page. Before I overworked it, this was brilliant. Um, so I guess that's a lesson to not overwork things. I don't really draw celebrities and stuff, but I really like this woman. It's, her, it's supposed to be Helena Bonham Carter. And then this just popped out. Yeah. One thing I do want to do more in my next sketchbook or books is have more strong like graphic looks like this. Um, I really enjoyed painting this. It was so much of fun so easy um, to come out of me, not necessarily easy to do. Just like it, it's so strong. Uh, this is one of my moving mechanisms and it's not very smooth because it gets stuck, but I love it. It's got a strong message. It's about lifeblood being cut off from a tribe. So when people ignore you or ostracize you, um, and how they cut off lifeblood. 
this is a self-portrait. Um, the color is, is not me, but it represents me. One of my favorite abstracts in here. I'm not an abstract expert. Um, it's something I would love to. Maybe I'll have a sketchbook with just abstracts. But yeah, this is an astrolabe. I love the idea. It took me uh, some time to figure out, I mean, not too much, but some time, like how to get these metal textures. I submitted it for an article idea. I don't think um, they liked it, but I like it. <laughs> and you can see the different phases of the moon when you push this down and out. And I enjoyed working on this. It was a challenge. And yeah, it's in my sketchbook because your sketchbooks can be used with moving mechanisms, just so you know. Uh, this is a painting about gaslighting and we've come to the end. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me going through my sketchbook. I hope you found it interesting and inspiring. If you have any questions about supplies, processes or ideas, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely try my best to help you. I hope that if you did like this video that you would like and subscribe and maybe share it with your friends who are also a part of this community and enjoy weird stuff. I will be seeing you soon, keep well, keep safe and until then... Mm -hmm.